Hey, good morning, Campla. You guys from Campla, Uganda, and around the world. I uh, thought I would, as requested, I would go ahead and get you the sound and video since the Zoom meeting was kind of rough this morning. The title of this message is Does It Make a Difference to Ask God? Prayer is the first and foremost conversation between you and God. His promise is to always listen to us. And the scriptures are full of statements about abiding with God and Him abiding with us. In the Bible, the words take on a greater intimacy and is often used to show the need to rely, to rely on the Lord in every aspect of one's life. In Psalms 37, 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight means take great pleasure, pleasure in God. In John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto ye. Abiding means taking everything to God in prayer. And then, how much do you know about the words of God? Do we know His words? Does His words abide in you? So it's not an easy promise. It's not just quoting the Bible and saying, and it shall be done unto you. It calls for an action on our part. In Psalms 37, 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. That answers these scriptures above. Commit your ways to God. Trust in Him. Trust and obey. There's no other way. Rely on the Lord in every aspect of one's life. Here's a words out of a song that I lo love. I heard as a little kid. Music's played a really big part in my life, teaching me and building my relationship with God. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows, for the joy He bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. Now this whole message is about talking to God taking everything to him in prayer, knowing that he's going to answer, trusting and obey. Here's some true facts of my life. In the early years of my life, prayer was, mom would tuck me into bed and say this prayer with me. And now lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take and should tuck me off to bed to go to sleep. As I grew older, the only time I remember praying, actually as a young boy and a young man, was when trouble would come my way or I was facing trial. Yeah, I was going to church at this time, but basically during the day and at work and all that, I mean, I don't know where God was because I was doing everything my way. But all of a sudden trials or tribulation would come, wow. I'd start asking God to help me. Do you see the problem with only praying or talking to God when you have a problem? I wonder how different many things in my life might have been had I knew or known more about prayer. Here's some things I didn't ask God about. Got my draft notice up in Fayetteville, Missouri. I knew it was in perfect health and I was told that once you passed your physical in Kansas City you'd go straight on to Fort Lindenwood you wouldn't even come home so we returned home from Arkansas to Missouri to prepare for this test I never did ask God whether I should or not I wonder what he would, might have told me to do would he have told me to quit my job and return back to Missouri? Would he have said wait? Because I received a few days before I was to go to Kansas City to get my test to go to the war. I was reclassified and never had to go. 
understand what I'm saying here? Another thing came up, Peg and I then, as we hadn't been married very long, but we started building our home in, in Neosho. How many children should we have? We didn't, I didn't ask God, um, didn't think about it. I wonder what he might have had in mind for us. And this bad part of this, we decided to have two children. Just a few days after our son was born, he, the doctors told us he was dying. The thoughts came to me very quick from God. What are you going to do if your son dies? You can't have any more children. Because see, I went and had a bisectomy a, a few days, too, after he had been born. Thank God that he didn't die, that he went on. Another thing that I didn't talk to God about or get involved in kind of haunts me. I didn't go to church while I was in pro baseball. When I was, you know, it was a strange experience, but I wonder what would have, how that might have changed some things in my baseball career. So what I've learned through the years is putting all things in God's hands. It's not just a song, trust no or take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. It's a it's, it's, it's been written in my heart now. I got the call one morning, our son was dying you know, on this, and God told me, or I told God I would do the best I could to follow him, whether he died or whether he lived. I thought I was really being, as a good step to, of growth. I didn't try to make a deal with God. I said, whether he lives or whether he dies, I will try to do better. The result of this, as I reached the hospital, the, the peace and the power that we felt, Peg and I both, like we never felt before. And through it all, our son lived. And here's a song God gave me about this. That I'll, I'll say it and then I'll point out the important things. As the Holy Spirit gave this to me, that. I didn't know. I thought, man, I'm writing a song for God. Once the sky of the world turned to dark gray, troubles and trials darkened my way. With tears in my eyes, I knelt and prayed. Whatever happens, I'll live better each day. Chorus, better each day, Lord, better each day. By thy grace and mercy, show me your way. Give me wisdom. Teach me to pray that I might live better, better each day. You realize what the Holy Spirit was teaching me in that course? Teach me to pray. I didn't even really know how to pray. I was talking to God that prayer can become so much more as we abide in Christ. And then that I might live better each day. There's no greater thing to do for yourself than want to live better each day. Last verse. Now the sky of my world is no longer gray. Yet each day at daybreak, I kneel down and I pray. I thank God for Jesus. Humbly I pray that I might live better, better each day. It wasn't until years later I began to realize how important the words in this song are. My prayers became stronger and stronger. My faith did the same. My walk with God became better each day. When God gave me this song, I thought I was doing something for Him, something pleasing to God. I'm sure it was okay. But I realize now that God was teaching me to pray and telling God I'd try to live better each day is the best decision I could have made for my life. It's the best decision anyone can make in their life. It's a live, strive to live better each day. Look to God to give you that direction. 
So I began to grow in my relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that I really didn't know much about, but I began to grow in this relationship. The more I prayed, the better my life became. And then strange things started happening when I would talk with God. Words started to flow from me with my voice, things I didn't know. And I'm starting as I started to think about this, I realized it wasn't me really praying. It was the Holy Spirit praying, interceding for me through me to God. And the Holy Spirit started saying songs through me to the Most High God. I got to hear them first and then understand them. One of the songs that really changed my life and burns in my life today, and a little more each day since God gave it to me. The story behind the song is as follows. I was asked to lead singing at a church, small church revival in Idola. Oklahoma. It was a really blessed time working and fellowshipping with the people in the community. And the Holy Spirit started flying. A desire burning in my heart that grows brighter each day. I want to share the words of the song. It's called Use Me. It says, Don't let it die, Lord. Don't let this feeling go away. Keep the flame you started burning bright through me today. Never more to roam or doing foolish things. Keep your flame burning in me today. And the chorus goes like this. Keep me yearning, Lord, for some soul today. Make me a blessing to someone today. Let them feel your power. Love them through me. Keep me burning, Lord. Use me. Last verse. Help me, Lord. Don't let me go astray. Keep me walking right beside you. Keep me aflame. Let me share your love. So there's a flame. Keep me burning, Lord, till you call my name. I would sing and play this every morning. And you know, amazing things start happening in my life. I thought, I started thinking, why are these things happening? What's going on? And you know, that still small voice said, Gary, what have you been praying? What have you been saying about using them? I didn't realize what I was really praying to him through the songs I would sing it. But amazing things keep happening to today. Some of those are very hard. But one of the things that it, it's kind of like a torture as you minister to people. You may provide food, even money sometimes most of all the word of God and you see them turn from that you see them bound to the devil you see Satan killing stealing and destroying their very life that God gives them it's a, it's a feeling I can't explain I'm just thankful that our family has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ and are all serving the Lord which I know they're living amazing lives and I know they're growing because of this. I've learned the more that you serve, the more that you grow, the better your life becomes because you're giving this, excuse me, all to Jesus. So here's what I've learned through all these years. I've prayed for a long time and it was gradually happening. But after all these years, the Holy Spirit has brought me to a truth that's even more thrilling than anything. God did not call me to be a problem solver or a provider. He didn't call me to heal my son 
one of those dots. Looking back through the years, he has done as his word says. He has always been with me, making all things work for my good. He is a problem solver in all situations. He is provider of all things. We are to trust and obey. We are to take our burdens and our trials to the Lord and leave them there. See it. How hard can that be? But you know you can't do this if you're not a child of God. Cut the bull. Go to John the third chapter and become born again. It's a free gift. All you got to do is ask and receive and know and believe that Jesus is a giver of all life, the new life that he will give you. And start praying. Die unto self and let him live. He is the problem solver. He's the savior. He's the giver of new life. Listen to these scriptures in Matthew 5, 36. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Wow. If I could, I'd probably put a few black ones on my head. God can do that. I believe he can do it. I don't want him to. I like my white hair. Or I'd just ask him to do it. That'd be foolish, wouldn't it? There's so many other things important to ask for instead of my hair. Luke 21, 18. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. You need to read the, all that chapter and everything to understand what that's talking about. Maybe you want to. Matthew 30, 29. I love Matthew. And I love the teaching on this really is part of my favorite scripture in the Bible. When I was concerned about providing for my family and wondering if we'd have food to eat, wondering what tomorrow might hold, still letting God trust him take care of it. You know, I, I carried those burdens. It says, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Wow. And in verse 30, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Wow. 31. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. We're valuable. We've been paid for and bought for with the price of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Are you letting Satan kill, steal your life and your kids? They're going to be what you're, the life you're leading. Don't go to church. Don't read the Bible. Don't get to know the Lord. Just live this life up. Maybe Satan will make you a great ball player. Maybe make you a great singer. Maybe make you wealthy. It's all going to perish. It's the cost. It's cursings. Matthew 30, 37. What it costs to follow Jesus Christ. He said, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Listen to this. And he that taketh not his cross and followed after me is not worthy of me. He that the, I like this final verse I want to share with you Matthew the same chapter 39 to 30 39 he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it Jesus is the way the truth and the life there's another way you're never gonna you know put your trust in him trust and obey there's no other way Jesus came for two reasons he came that you might have life 
He came to pay for the penalty of your sin. He came to pay the price. He's talking about his condemn, con- condemnation. You're condemned for hell. But when you receive the blood of Jesus Christ, you're set free. That condemnation is paid for. Your destination is heaven. Now the battle begins to, you, to either be a good child of God and to follow and trust and obey or to let Satan steal this blessing from you. Steal, kill, and steal that new life you have. Are you willing to pay the price to follow God? He that hath not his mother, father, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, and yea, his own life also, and does not take up his cross, cannot be my disciple. The cost for that abundant life, the second reason Jesus came, will cost you your very life. you got to die to self. This is a war. You know, all people are created with eternal life. Did you know that? You're going to live forever. Man, that's great, isn't it? One problem with that, where are you going to spend eternity? Heaven or hell? And sometimes eternal life is used where it should be everlasting life only. For in John 3, 6, it says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting what? Everlasting life. You'll find places in the Bible that they should be using the word everlasting instead of eternal, where there's no confusion. The same comes with born again versus saved and salvation. You won't find those words meaning the same as being born again, receiving new life. These things are at most important as you study the Bible so that you understand what's going on. When you are saved from the penalty of sin, you're saved from it. When you're born again, you're given a new life. You receive the Holy Spirit. You receive a measure of faith. You're a child of God. You now have the power to become children of God, obedient, trusting children. It's your decision. God doesn't want puppets. He wants people that love Him. Today, choose what you want, blessings or cursing. And again, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless. I'm Gary Crawford. I go with Jesus Kid. Give me a call, whatever you want to do. I'll be glad to discuss any of this with you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.